Welcome back, my dear students. This is Mahavo Sudhanaki, Senior Lecturer of Biology Department, Manistur College. Today, I will discuss Chapter 2. The name of this chapter is Cells and Tissues of Organism. My learning objectives are the characteristics of parenchyma, polenchyma, sclerenchyma, structure of xylem and phloem and its function, then characteristics of voluntary, involuntary and cardiac muscle. Now, simple tissue. What is simple tissue? Simple tissue, the tissue which contains the cells of same size, shape and structure is called simple tissue. Simple tissue is of three types, parenchyma, polenchyma and sclerenchyma. Now, first of all, the characteristics of parenchyma. The, in case of the characteristic of parenchyma, the cells are living isodiametric, thin walled and turgid with protoplasm. That means the amount of protoplasm in the parenchyma the cell is higher than that of the other cells. Next point, intercellular space is found in the parenchyma the cell. Here is the diagram of parenchyma tissue. The cell is thin uh, walled and cytoplasm is dense and here is the nucleus and the new intercellular spaces. This is the, the gap between in between the two adjacent cells are known as intercellular space. So intercellular spaces are present here. Now the cell walls are composed of cellulose. So the cell wall is composed of the cell, the cell wall is thin and it is composed of cellulose. If the chloroplast a chloroplast is present in parenchyma cell that is called chlorenchyma. In case of air fill chamber, if air chamber or air fill spaces are present in parenchyma cell, those parenchyma cells are called parenchyma. Now, the function of parenchyma. Parenchyma helps to organize the body of plants or other parts of plants and another function is it helps to produce food, helps to transport food and finally it also stores the food. Now, the characteristics of polenchyma. In case of cholenchyma, you can see in the diagram that the corners are thicker, comparatively thicker than on the other side. So in this case, the cell walls, the cell walls are irregular, thickened, and the, the corners are more thicker. Okay, now the characteristics. The walls of the cells become thick due to the deposition of cellulose and pectin. So why they become thicker? Because due to the deposition of cellulose and pectin. Then cell walls are irregular thickened with thicker corners. You can see that the corners are more thicker. Okay. The cells are elongated, filled with protoplasm. Here is the this is the, the cytoplasm, and you know the combination of cytoplasm and the cytoplasm and the nucleus collectively known as the protoplasm. So in case of polenchyma, they have protoplasm. Intercellular space may be present. In this diagram, intercellular space is not present, but in case of Polenchyma, intercellular space may be present. Now the function, to produce food and to provide the plants with mechanical support and resistance. Now the characteristics of sclerenchyma. You can see the diagram, inside the diagram there is no nucleus or protoplasm. Why? Because when they become mature, they lose their protoplasm. That is why the nucleus and the protoplasm or cytoplasm remain Absent. Now the characteristics. The cell walls are thick due to the deposition of lignin. You can see this is the cell wall. Okay, the cell wall is more thicker than that of the parenchyma and sclerenchyma. So in case of sclerenchyma, the cell wall is thicker because hence the lignin is deposited on the cell walls. Okay, next in the early stages of their development. Sclerenchyma cells are alive. So when they in they starts to grow uh, in in mature condition, they are alive. The cells are alive. But when the cells become mature, if they, by they lose their protoplasm. That means when the cells become mature by losing their uh, living protoplasm. That means you can remove this when you can write only the cells become mature by losing the living protoplasm. Okay. Now the function or functions of sclerenchyma. What are the functions of sclerenchyma? Sclerenchyma provides mechanical support and rigidity and finally it also helps 
to conduct the water and minerals. Now complex tissue. The tissue which is composed of uh, comprises of different types of cells is called complex tissue. Complex tissue is of two types. One is xylem and another one is phloem. Now what is xylem? The complex tissue which helps to transport water and minerals from roots to different parts of the plant is called xylem. Now xylem is comprises of four types of cells. First of all, trachea. Okay. It is the four types of cells are tracheid vessels, then uh, xylem parenchyma, xylem fiber. So the characteristics of tracheids. Tracheids, this is the diagram of trachea. Tracheids are elongated. You can see that this is the elongated cells with slender and sharp ends. So the ends are sharp. After lignification, their lumen may become narrower. Okay, lumen is mean, means the passage through which the uh, water and minerals conducted from one place to another. Thickening of the cell walls is of different types. It, they may be electrical, spiral, scalary form and pleated. Now the function of tracheid. The function of the main function of tracheid is to provide conduction to related organs with proper sap conduction. Sap means the when the water get mixed with different types of mineral salt that is called sap. So it provides sap conduction to related organs with proper rigidity and they also store force. Now vessel. This is the diagram of vessel. Now the characteristics of vessel. Vessels are short, tubular in structure. That means the cells are short and tubular in structure. The cells are connected end to end. That means this end is connected with the next end and the, this cell is connected with the another cell. And by connecting end to end, they form a tube or channel like structure. Vessel cells develop a long tube when their terminal walls are dissolved. That means when the end are connected with the next or adjacent cell, they become dissolved and they form a long channel or tube like structure. In their early stages, the cells are filled with protoplasm. But they die, the, the cell die by losing their protoplasm with the progression of their growth. Now, the function of vessel to pro transport water and minerals to provide the organs with proper rigidity. Now, xylem parenchyma. This is the diagram of a xylem parenchyma. The cell walls may be thick or thin. You know that the cell wall of parenchyma is Thin. But in case of xylem parenchyma, it may be thick or thin. The parenchyma cells in a primary xylem have thin walls. In secondary xylem, the cell wall are thick walled. The function to store food and to transport water. Now, the characteristics of xylem fiber. This is the diagram of xylem fiber. The a, a, what is xylem fiber? The Sclerenchyma tissue that is present in xylem is called xylem fiber. Now the characteristics. The end of ends of these types of cells are tapered. You can see these two ends are tapered. Mature cells do not contain protoplasm and become dead. Hence the uh, sclerenchyma tissue lose their by losing their uh, protoplasm they become dead. So the mature cells of the xylem fiber are dead. Now function, to provide plants with mechanical support to transport water and minerals and to store food. Now phloem tissue. What is phloem tissue? The complex tissue that transport the prepared food from leaves to different parts of a plant is called phloem tissue. Phloem tissue comprises of four types of cell. The seed cell, companion cell, phloem parenchyma, phloem fiber. Hence, phloem tissue comprises of four types of cells. That is why phloem tissue is one kind of complex tissue. First of all, the characteristics of seed cell. This is the diagram of phloem tissue. You can see that the seed cells here in diagram, it is shown that the seed tube. Actually, the seed cells, when arranged one after another, it form a tube-like structure and this tube-like structure is called seed tube. Now the characteristics. Seed cells are arranged end to end and make a tubular structure called sieve tube, as I have told you. 
Next, the cells are separated from each other. These cells are separated from each other by a plate-like structure. See plate-like structure? This plate-like structure is called seed plate. The cells are separated from each other with a seed plate-like structure is called seed plate. Their cell walls are lignified. So the walls of seed cell are lignified. Hence the lignin are deposited here. That is why it is known as lignified. Mature seed cells do not contain nucleus. You can see that there is no nucleus inside this seed cells or seed tube. These are the nucleus. These are the nucleus. But here is no nucleus. Now the function. To, the main function of seed cell is to conduct food. Now the characteristics of competing cell. This is the second type of cell of flowing tissue. In this diagram, you can see that this is the companion cell which lies beside the seed tube. And the nucleus of the companion cell is little larger. So, the characteristics of companion cell, along with each seed cell, a parent gamma cell is found, which is called companion cell. Its nucleus is much larger. You can see that the nucleus of the companion cell is larger than the, of the other parent cell. The companion cell is tarsied with protoplasm and thin wall. The wall of the companion cell is thin wall. Now the function. The, it is assumed that the nucleus of the companion cell controls some activities of the seed cell. Hence, seed cell does not have any nucleus. Next, the phloem parenchyma. The parenchyma that is present in phloem is called phloem parenchyma. These types of cell. In this diagram, this is phloem parenchyma, this is the phloem parenchyma, these cells are phloem parenchyma. These types of cells are thin wall. The wall of the phloem parenchyma are thin. The cells have protoplasm, the function. The function of the phloem parenchyma is, is the, these cells help to help in, the, uh, sorry, here it will be these cells. help to store and conduct food. Now, the fourth type of cell that is present in phloem tissue that is phloem fiber. Phloem fiber are sclerenchyma cells. These cells are long and these are arranged end to end. Which are, uh, uh, these long cells are arranged end to end with each other which is called bus fiber. Jute fiber is one kind of bus fiber. Pits are present on the walls of these cells. Now the function. The function of flowing fiber, it helps to conduct food. Now the muscular tissue. What is muscular tissue? The special type tissue, the type of tissue which will originate from the mesoderm of embryo that is capable for contracting or expanding that to affect the movement and form the muscle of vertebrae is called muscular tissue. Muscular tissue is of three types, voluntary muscle, involuntary muscle and cardiac muscle. Now first of all, what is voluntary muscle or the, what are the characteristics of voluntary muscle? The muscle that can contract or expand according to the will of the organism is called voluntary muscle. This is the diagram of voluntary muscle. The outer membrane is called sarcolemma. The new, these are the nucleus. You can see that in a cell there are more than one nucleus and the longitudinal or the fiber-like structure on the surface of the voluntary muscle which are known as myofibrin. These are the fiber-like structure which are present on the voluntary muscle. Now the characteristics. The cells are tubular. So the cells of the voluntary muscles are tubular unbranched. You can see that there is no branches. They are parallel to each other. So unbranched and have transverse striations. Now, what are the transverse striations? These are the transverse striations. Okay. They have generally more than one nucleus. These muscles can contract or expand quickly. You can see the muscles of our hand or legs. We can move our hand so faster. So that you can contract or expand very quickly then it is also called the mark or skeletal muscle why this is called the mark 
tissue because or mark muscle because of these striations okay and skeletal muscle why they are known as a skeletal muscle because these muscles always remain present along with the large or long bones of our body that is why hence they remain, uh, remain present along with the skeletal that is why these are known as skeletal muscle now the second type of muscular tissue that is involuntary muscle or smooth muscle from the diagram you can see that the diagram appears the structure of tissue these are spindle shape and there is no transverse striations okay now the characteristics these cells are spindle shape transverse striations are not present hence transverse striations are not present that is why these are known as smooth muscle so they are known as smooth muscle and these muscles are present in blood vessel and elementary canal now cardiac muscle what is cardiac muscle the muscle that forms the heart is known as cardiac muscle from the diagram you can see that the structure of cardiac muscles are as like as the voluntary muscle but you know the function of cardiac muscle is like involuntary muscle hence the heart does not beat according to the will of the organism or animals okay in case of these you can see that the cells of the cardiac muscle are tubular but these are branched and moreover there is a special disc like structure which is known as intercalated disc another important characteristic of cardiac muscle is in case of voluntary muscle they have more than one nucleus but, uh, more than one nucleus but in case of cardiac muscle in each cell there is a single nucleus another characteristics these types of muscles forms heart the cells are tubular branched and transverse striations are present between the cells of the tissue intercalated discs are present so you can see that this is the this of the intercalated discs which are present in between two adjacent cells the cells of the heart muscle that means the cardiac muscle are remain to join together by branches through this branch all the cells or remain of the heart, uh, cardiac muscle remain connected or joined with each other so they contract and relax together now you can compare in among voluntary involuntary and cardiac muscle how the voluntary muscle can contract or expand according to the will of the organism involuntary can contract or expand according to the will of the organism and cardiac muscle that forms the heart is called cardiac muscle then how many nucleus are present and what are the shapes of the cells uh, that you can make the comparison among three types of muscular tissue so from my today's lecture you have learned the characteristics of parenchyma collenchyma sclerenchyma uh, then the characteristics of xylem and phloem moreover from this lecture you can make the differences between simple tissue and complex tissue you can write down the comparison among parenchyma collenchyma sclerenchyma you can write down the comparison or the difference between xylem and phloem all these you can make the uh, you can make your note or prepare your note uh, from my lecture you can compare the characteristics then you will get the points how you will write the differences and finally i have discussed three types of muscle from which you can also compare the uh, you can write the comparison among these three types of muscles in my next class i will be back with a new lesson till then take care